Hello X Traders and we are going to continue with our spreads video series and in a previous video in January we looked at spreads 101 we looked at verticals okay and we talked about how verticals basically took something like a long call which is infinitely you know profitable but that's not really ever the case of course uh, but there is a big downside, right? There is a big risk. And we talked about taking a uh, trade like that and doing two things. Number one, we want, which is what we actually want, is to reduce this risk, right? We don't want to risk a thousand dollars from the start. We want to risk a little bit less. And we can do that by selling a call, which will eventually lower this risk from a thousand to maybe 500 and as a trade-off our uh, potential which was infinite you know <laughs> uh, but never realizable as infinite uh, it gets capped okay so there's a max to it so we won't make infinite profit we'll make a little bit less than infinite and then from there on it'll just go flat okay and what that PNL looked like is this all right, so we went down from 1,000 to 700. Okay, so that's not that bad. From 1,000 to 700, so we're only risking 700, so 30% less. And as a trade-off, we get a cap in our infinite profit. So instead of making infinite amount of money, we're only going to make $1,200. Sounds good to me. Okay, the, one of the big takeaways here is that this strategy allows us to play big names, which are usually expensive, um, and to play, more importantly, closer to in-the-money calls. The closer to in-the-money, the higher the delta. The higher the delta, the higher the probability the option will close in the money, making you, of course, money. So um, those higher delta uh, options um, are obviously have a higher probability of ending up in the money, but they are also more expensive. So how do you deal with something like that? Well, you take an expensive call such as this, right? Look at how close the current price of 180 is to the 195 call that we're buying. Now, that means that this is going to be a very expensive call. So it's $1,000. So the way to reduce that risk is we take the vertical by selling a call, right? Selling it after whatever this price is, which is 205 so we still buy the 185 and we profit from the break even but only up to the 205 the sold strike okay but we're doing it with a lot less risk how how much less 30% less all right so that was the beauty of verticals and keep in mind that verticals are directional okay just as singles they are directional and you can take a single and reduce its risk by 30% to 700 by making a wide vertical. And as you tighten that vertical, okay, you actually get a lower entry. You get a lower also uh, profit, but you get a lower entry. Okay, So you can play with verticals, but they're still very directional. You still want that ticker to blow past that, um, blow past that uh, strike and uh, you will make your money. So, okay, that's great. Now, what if we don't have a price target? What if we're not exactly sure that this thing is going to blow past our strike, right? Enter time spreads. Now, <clears throat> time spreads are a little bit more neutral. And if you tinker with them, you can actually make them a little bit directional. So when the market is choppy, and it doesn't, you know, it's not necessarily uh, bullish or bearish in any particular direction, then that's the perfect time for time spreads uh, like calendars and diagonals. Now, what does that entail? Well, when we looked at verticals and uh, single options or naked options, we are relying on delta to make the money for us. Delta is how much the ticker moves, the underlying security that is represented by that option. If the ticker moves in a large direction, whether up for calls or down for puts, then delta is what's going to make our options premium increase in value. 
Now, if we're neutral, then that means that delta is off the table. So who are the next two most likely candidates to play in an options contract like that? Well, that's theta and vega. Now, where does that come in? Now, theta obviously plays in with delta as well. Theta is the time, right? So how much your premium decays with time. And as we have seen, time decay is exponential the closer we get to expiry. Vega is volatility, okay? So how sensitive is that option to the volatility in the market? So there are a lot of market volatile events, which obviously affect the price of an option, okay? So those are the two Greeks that we're going to be focusing on when we talk about time spreads. Okay, so let's take a closer look at theta and vega. Theta we saw in this uh, chart before, you know, time decay starts out very slowly the farther you are from expiry, and the closer you get to expiry, the faster it decays. And that's why you need bigger moves towards the end here if you're going to make a lot of money with these options. You need uh, smaller moves, in this case, if you're far from expiry, uh, but the problem is that, um, you know, if you buy options that are too far out, that's more expensive. That's why you'll see a lot of day traders dabble around around here, you know, five or three days to expiry or even zero days to expiry. Um, so, but the higher quality trades are back here, okay? And that is also why spreads are so good for this because they're more expensive if they're higher quality, okay? So time is represented by theta, or time decay is represented by theta. Volatility is represented by vega, and we know that there are a lot of events in the lifetime of an options contract all the way until it expires, which can make that options uh, price go up or down, okay? And uh, those events represent what is uh, what, what we call volatility, okay? There are things like upgrades and downgrades and inflation numbers and recession numbers and GDP or employment numbers which make traders uh, nervous right and jittery and then all of a sudden they react and they usually overreact to these uh, events and that is what causes volatility and volatility can also affect the price of an options contract okay so, uh, and keep in mind that the farther away from expiry you are, the more of these events there are that can affect your options contract price. All right, so this is another, uh, before we get into the theory and the finally the example of uh, time spread, is um, this concept up here is, is usually what most traders keep in mind because most traders buy options and that is, well, you buy low, you sell high, obviously. Okay, so let's say that you're down here, same as if you're buying a stock. If you're buying a call, you want to buy when that call is low and you buy it in at $100 and then it goes to 200 300 400 500 600 boom, you sell high. You made money, okay? Buy low, sell high. That's the usual case or the more common case where when traders are looking at buying options, whether it be buying calls, if that ticker is going to the upside, if you bought it at 100 and the ticker goes up this way, then you're going to be able to sell at 600. Puts work the other way. Okay, you buy a put here at 100. As it goes down, you're going to sell your put for 500 down here. Okay, because puts increase in value as the ticker goes down, and calls increase in value as the ticker goes up. Okay, but in both cases. Your put is increasing in value. Your call is increasing in value. Both options are increasing in volume. In value, you're buying it low and you're selling it high. That's how you make money. Everybody knows this. This one is a little bit more counterintuitive, and uh, and it has to do with shorts and all these you know uh, fancy terms of shorting stocks, which you can do. But you can uh, basically short options in this way. And what you do is you sell high and you buy low because think about it. It's the same thing. When you're selling options, what you want to do is you're up here. You can buy a put and that put will increase in value as the ticker goes down. Or you could sell a call, which up here, look at this. People who bought here at 100 sold at 300. 
So this options contract up here, this call, is worth 300 You could buy it and expect it to go up, or you could sell that options contract and expect it to go down. If you sell it at 300 it's going to go down to 100 Well, if you already sold at 300 and you buy this at 100 then you're, pro you're pocketing 200 bucks. Okay, chronologically, it's kind of weird because you sell first at 300 and then you buy at 100, right? But it doesn't matter. You still bought at 100. So you can sell options, right, and be profitable if you sell high and buy low, all right? So what does all this have to do with time spreads? Well, get this. If you don't have a particular strike that you are expecting this stock to blow through, then you're just expecting it to basically ping pong, right, or pinball up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up, right, until then it breaks through. This is the perfect idea, the perfect example of when, when to use a time spread. If you are a trader here at 190 for Caterpillar, and you are long-term bullish, okay, then you can buy a 220, even though it's at 190, right? You can, you can buy a 220 call, but it's going to be expensive because Caterpillar is an expensive stock, and because you're going to buy it out long-term. The longer, the farther out you go, the more expensive the call is going to be. Check your, your uh, options uh, chains, right? Your option chains, the further you go out in time, the more expensive the options are. So if you're going to buy them, then it's going to cost you a lot of money. So what do you do? You want to buy that because that's the high quality, high beta, sorry, high delta 220 call. Okay, It's very likely to be in the money because it's far out and because it's caterpillar and it's bullish and whatever. But it's expensive. It'll run you a thousand, five thousand, whatever many dollars. Well, if you expect it to ping pong, you know, from here to six months, which is exactly what we did with the Caterpillar example, well, then guess what? When this thing goes up, right, and it hits, let's say, the top of this channel, you sell a call. You sell it at 100 and expect it to go back down. And then you can buy that, that same call at 50 bucks. So you pocket 50, okay? And then... You wait for this thing to go up. When it hits that resistance again, right? You're still expecting us to chop sideways. You sell another call. This time it went higher, so you might sell for 150, right? And then it drops, and it drops even lower. So it drops maybe to zero, right? So you pocket 150. So now you have 150 plus the 50 you had before. Now you've pocketed 200 bucks, right? I expect this thing to go back up again. You sell it at 300. This thing drops to 100. You pocket 200. Now you've got 200 plus 200. That's 400. This does this again. Maybe you pocket another 300. That's 700. Does it again? Maybe you get another 100. That's 800. Right? And you've been basically rinsing and repeating. Okay? Every time it hits the top of your resistance, whether it's a horizontal resistance or a dynamic uptrending resistance. All right, every time it hits the top of the channel, the top of that trend line, you sell a call against the one that you have out here. Selling calls, selling options is dangerous unless you have a long call to go with it, right? It'll let you do that because if you have to, if you get assigned on that sold call, then you obviously have to deliver those shares where you, well, you can you can deliver them because you have an options contract that allows you to buy up here. Okay, so that's the safety of diagonals, of sorry, of spreads. But time spreads are even better because you can make money off of these little, uh, you know, inter uh, intermediary ups and downs, and sell calls every time and make maybe seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, and then by the time this thing hits, you know, it's it's run up then you're going to make $700 you've already pocketed previously plus whatever you make up here or if this thing doesn't you know ever break out of that channel then worst case scenario you have 700 plus here let's say that you lose 700 here then you break even 
you know, but you're more than likely going to exit this trade before it eats away at your profits that you've already pocketed back here. So that is exactly what time spreads do. So let's look at some of the characteristics of each. Okay, we're going to compare the verticals we saw previous month with the calendars, and then we'll move into diagonals. But calendars and diagonals are pretty much the same thing. Okay, so verticals, you buy an in-the-money expiration strike. Why? Because you're buying something that is high quality, and you're offsetting it. It's expensive, and you're offsetting it by selling an out-of-the-money call. And in the money, the in the money call that you bought is expensive because it's high quality, and the call that you sold is going to be out of the money, which means its delta is less, which means it is less likely and less likely to end up in the money, which is exactly what you want when you're selling an option. Okay, and basically, um, you sell it whenever you sell it as soon as possible. Uh, whenever you make your profit, you sell it. You know, you don't wait to expire it. Uh, and then you leg into, you can also leg into a vertical to lock in profit. If a call that you had is, uh, is already up 100%, you can say, oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and sell a call against this. That means that if this thing starts going down, it starts going south, then I'm going I'm to have a sold call to offset however much this ticker keeps going down. In worst case scenario, when your sold call profits enough to offset what you've already made, then you're break even. Otherwise, you can just let this thing ride. So you can leg into it as a profit locking strategy, and we'll cover an example of that in the future. But basically that is how uh, you put on a vertical. How do you put on a calendar? You you still buy that far dated, which is the high quality, expensive uh, leg that you want or options contract that you want. But you sell a near dated one out of, the, uh, again, out of the money so that you can collect that premium and preferably keep the premium. The difference is that in this case, um, you want it to, you want that sold call to actually go to zero. So as soon as that thing hits zero, then you get rid of it. Otherwise, you can just hold it if it's far enough from the uh, strike price. You can just hold it until it is 100% out of the money, and then you go ahead and repeat that, and that is the key. Once you're out of that short leg, then you can just rinse and repeat. Okay, So uh, that is the, uh, the difference between the calendar and the vertical. Remember, the vertical, both of these have the same expiration date. They just have different uh, strike prices. So expiration date arrives, and you're automatically out of both of them. In the calendar or diagonals, in the time spreads, because they have different times, different expiration dates, then you buy a very far-dated, high-quality, expensive, in-the-money call, or put, you can do it with puts, call, and you sell these weekly calls against it. And what you're going to be doing, remember, is when it hits the top, you sell. Okay? When it hits the top again, you sell. When it hits the top again, you sell. You sell. You sell. Right? And, of course, after you sell, when it hits the bottom, you buy back. And you profit, because you bought back lower. You sell, you buy it back down here. You sell, you buy it back here, and then again down here, and then you keep going. You sell, and then you buy again down here. And you can choose whenever you want to stop doing this, whenever you think you've had enough money, you know, in, in case you're thinking that this thing is about to take off, or you have maybe you have earnings seasons coming up and everything's looking positive, or you have uh, some good uh, uh, macroeconomic expectations, and you're expecting this thing to rocket past that strike, maybe here. You know, so then then you don't continue with this leg. You just oh, okay. Let's just leave it, and then it'll rock it up. You know, once you sold, once you bought back the call you sold up here, then you let it run. You, know, you don't sell another one. You just go okay, and then you profit from your long call. All right. So that's the difference between the verticals and the calendars or diagonals, which are the time spreads. Basically, you're still buying that far out of the money. Uh, sorry, uh, buying that far in the money, uh, high quality option, and you're selling these out of the money 
near-dated options just to let them go to zero so that you can collect that sold premium. And then you just basically rinse and repeat. All right. So um, this is basically what, uh, if you go to Option Strat, which is highly recommended uh, to visualize uh, these kinds of spread strategies. This is the 180 call calendar. Okay. And as you can see here, the top one, that is the June, and the bottom one is the March. Okay. So you're buying this 180. June, which must be really expensive, but you're selling the March call, all right? And the strikes are the same. So this, from June, from March to June, there's three months, and basically three months times four weeks, that's tw that's 12 weeks that you can rinse and repeat, right? You can go ahead and sell, and then wait for it to go down and buy it at a lower price, and then you profited, and then wait for it to go back up, and then sell again, and then do that, 11 more times okay and the calendar profits only when you're uh, it, it achieves maximum profit when you uh, basically when you when your short call is at the peak here at whatever this the the, the ticker price is where, wherever this peak is all right that's your zone or your uh, area of maximum profit now that's very hard to hit if you go back to your verticals you'll see on a vertical, it's a lot easier because you can profit all the way from here, which was 192, all the way up to 200, you know, 300, and you can still profit here, okay? So you can be off by quite a lot and still be profitable in a vertical. But with a calendar, it's a lot riskier because look at this, you know. Uh, after a certain point below whatever this was, which is, must be the 180, right? And this is the 160. Anything from 160 and lower, you lose. And guess what? Anything above 210 and higher, you also lose, right? You lose money. So um, the thing is you want to make sure that you can rinse and repeat, right, many times so that, you know, even if you end up maybe here or here or here or there, that you've done it enough times that you've uh, built up this cushion of profits, right? So that's the calendar, and you can make these a little bit more bullish. So in this case, we're moving it, we're still on Boeing, and remember it's trading at around 180, so it was trading at around 180 down here, and uh, here we basically, we've done a calendar, but the 195 is up here, okay? So this is the peak of maximum profit, right? And we are currently at this price, at 180. So this is a, a, a calendar, but it's a little bit bullish. It has a little, a little bit of direction, okay? We would expect this thing to move up closer towards the 195 as compared to this one, where we are basically selling the 180, right, as well as buying it because these are calendars. They have the same strike price. So in this case, we would expect this to remain at 180. If we use our chart that we use for an example, if if it's trading at 180 and we sell a 180 calendar or diagonal, okay, if we sell a 180 time spread, we are going to expect this thing to trade within a very narrow margin, okay, somewhere in here. If we were to reach this this point in time here, we would be losing a lot of money because guess what? We're out of that 180, okay, and then all of a sudden, boom, we're back up, but then if we reach here, then again, we're not profitable, we're losing money because we're out of that 180, okay? That's this example here. Your short strike is at 180. If you move this short strike to the 195, as we did in this case, well, then that means that you're more than likely up here, okay? So this thing better end up closer to this area so that you can be profitable. So that's the difference between a calendar that uses a little bit of direction, okay, your short strike is a little bit uh, above the current price of 180, okay, or if you are really expecting this thing to just chop around for a long time, well, then your short strike is uh, the actual current price of the ticker, okay, or where you would expect this to chop. So where would these... Uh, you know, where would uh, something like this work? Well, if you are expecting uh, maybe a Fed announcement, you know, 
uh, and uh, if everybody's unsure of where this thing is going to head, uh, then uh, you know there's not enough bullish or bearish momentum in either direction. Then you can do a quick uh, calendar, you know, and in, in and out in a few days, three to five, maybe seven days, and um, this would just chop around, right? Because there's no definite bias to the upside or to the downside, and that's why a lot of these are played in earning season. And you'll see uh, traders play these close to the actual earnings, okay? Because since the ticker is not expected to move a lot, what is expected to happen is volatility to go up. And why does that prof why does that benefit a calendar? Because when volatility goes up, premiums go up. And that means that a call calendar is going to go up in value, especially if you have something like this. This is ideal, right? For uh, ER. You're here, you're expecting this thing to move up as volatility goes up, right? And that is exactly when you would put on something like a call calendar. Okay, so let's move on to diagonals. Diagonals are a little bit more directional, okay? And we're going to compare these really quickly. Um, basically, they're both volatility positive, so they both increase with volatility, as we have mentioned before. And they're both, um, you know, you're buying something that's far dated, uh, where there's more uncertainty, which is why these are volatility positive. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the PNL chart. This is what that looks like. Okay, so it's a little bit closer. If you look at this, a little bit closer uh, to what the vertical spread uh, chart looks like, right? And this is because we have uh, switched our strikes, and that should make sense to you because in a calendar, and I'm quickly going to jump back. In a calendar, in both cases, the strikes are the same. 180, 180, bought and sold. 195, 195, bought and sold. Okay. With a diagonal, the strikes are different. 165, 195. Well, guess what? That looks a lot like our vertical spread setup. Right? 185, 205. You're buying the 185. You're selling the 205. Right? That's the vertical. If you go back to the diagonal, you're buying the 165, you're selling the 195. Okay, So it should be similar. What is the difference here? Well, two main differences. One of them is the expiries are different from a vertical. So you can do that whole rinse and repeat thing where it goes up, you sell, it goes down, you buy it back, profit. It goes up, you sell, it goes down, you buy back, profit. Right? And you do that until, until such time you feel comfortable enough that that strike is achievable and you let it go. Right? And also because of the volatility. Okay? These, are, these are so far, out, far dated. You know, this is June compared to, a, to the March sold options that they are volatility positive. So there's a lot of events in between that can make these things jump up in value, which is perfect for uh, somebody obviously waiting to make money. All right, so that is the wrap up on calendars and diagonals. Uh, this is uh, these are the two you know charts that you could you should keep in mind when you're thinking about calendars and diagonals. And again, you should always uh, uh, time spreads keep in mind uh, have different expiries. Okay, what they differ in the calendar and the diagonal is if the calendar has the same strike, so it's a lot harder to hit. So beware. Uh, and the diagonal has different strikes, so you can, you know, you can uh, increase your zone of comfort, if you will, so that uh, you know you don't have to stay glued to your screen every minute, every hour, every day. You know, you can uh, come back in and check in on these every now and then, and uh, uh, you'll uh, surely make money, even though it's not an infinite amount of money, but it's still money. All right, so that is what I wanted to cover for time spreads. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh, to get all the notifications of the latest videos. And uh, again, uh, DM me. Uh, a lot of you have been DMing me about, you know, you want me to cover this topic, the other topic. Go ahead and... Uh, uh, my, on my Discord, you could uh, get in touch with me. My user is Marcio Coco. You can see that on the beginning of this video as well. And you can uh, DM me for whatever uh, topics you want me to cover. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video series on spreads. And 
I'll, li I'll leave a link here for the verticals um, video, which I uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, I hope you guys um, really enjoy this, and I'll see you next time. Have a great one.